So looking ahead at the rear axle for a strip down. It's interesting that it's got a hole in it, which I think is a genuine keyhole from a drain hole. So I, this is a, a re. This let's have a look at this quite carefully. This is where the oil is in this part, and if you look here, is a piece of reinforcing. For this for the spring mount for the, so this is this is just a hollow piece of box section with a hole in it so we can weld that up there's no chance that the oil is not going to leak out of this basically here here's where the oil would drain and if you follow the diff case round it, it's here so this piece is a sort of filler part So, you know, it's not as serious as it looks, it's just, it's just keyhole out, there's another drain hole there. It doesn't seem to have one on the other side, which is interesting. If it is, it's blocked, I have to go over it carefully and look for one. It's time to start stripping down this rear axle. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at some tools that I'm going to need. And uh, what I've got is a piece of, well it's an off cut from a piece of angle iron, but what is it, something like 4mm flat bar, maybe 5mm. And what it does, it fits inside the slot of the drain. I want to make sure that the axle is empty of oil, basically. So the other thing I'm going to need is a little wire brush to get in there and get that dirt out. And then I've got a pair of uh, mole grips because that's how I'm going to get the rotary, the rotary leverage on this. Be in there like that. And uh, I think it's going to be a two-hand job, and uh, still haven't got the other camera phone set up yet. So. There you go. We'll put it in there. Oh, wow, that's done up tight, isn't it? Yeah, so any excuse to get this thing out. Just a combination of old oil and mud solidified over time with rust. And you can see it's starting to perspire. That's what we're looking for. Once it starts to perspire, you know we've heated it up enough. Well, at least at the top we have. It's you know, starting to perspire now. And obviously, when you're going get close to it, it's going to be hot. You don't want to touch it much. Alright, so that was a war. Well, it was a battle. <laughs> it was a battle which we won. And there we go. Plenty of crap coming out of that. That's what you have to look forward to. To an old one. Wow, I can smell it. It's coming up. It's not roses either. It's old EP80. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, cooking oil. Okay, so it's in there. There is some oil in there, so we've got to get a vessel. Flip this over. Shouldn't be too hard to flip it over. But how much oil is in there? It's got a two pint capacity. It could be full up, so I really need quite a big vessel, potentially. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Obviously, I'll be able to turn this over. I don't really want to damage my vessel. It's an old school dinner's baking tray, which I found in a skip, along with dozens of others. But I left the dozens of others there. Should have, 
should have taken some more. That's old school dinners, which is a different story, which we won't go into just yet. There we go. Ah, now with past experience, I'll just get out of the way and take you over to what happens if you don't do it this way. You end up removing the diff and having a mess. <laughs> Let's go back. So I've got a vessel, a container, with a safe disposal of this oil. Later on, uh, it's going to get difficult to do this one-handed. <sighs> Basically, I'm going to turn this diff. At the moment, it's it's got a few more degrees to turn before it's right over uh, right over the vessel here. <sighs> so while the rest of the oil is draining out, this. I think it's a five eighths. The breather. Typically, this one is a bit stuck and all. So uh, this actually was five sixteenths Whitworth, and I also needed to use an extension lever, quite a long one, as well as a blowtorch. And finally, got this to start shifting. Oops. It's going to be rather hot by the time it gets off. There's no reason why it shouldn't go again, providing it works. There's a little ball bearing in there. It needs to move freely, but it'll go for a clean first. It should be popped in a tub of vinegar as soon as possible. Now, removing these bits of brakes, I would, in my experience, that brakes had it, that brake pipe. You can see it's just got a little hole at the tip. You know, once, once a brake line is that rusty looking, MOT guys, they don't like them. You know, even if it hasn't quite got a hole in it, it's still not really ready. So, well, it's definitely got a hole in it, actually. So that should be seven sixteenths across the flats. And we want to really could remove those while we're here. That looks like a half inch or something to get rid of that union. But it might be a good idea to try and take the flexible pipe off while it's probably easy. It's it's got something to hold on to as long as we don't rip it off, rip it off the surface here. Flexible hose, I think it's past it. Need a little persuasion with a blowtorch, but that's not a problem. It was again, it was 5 16ths Whitworth. So now we are going to have a look at undoing this. Should be 7 16ths across the flats. Here's the 7 16ths. I'm going to give it a little clean with a wire brush and probably want to heat it up a bit as well. It's going to snap off the, wire, uh, the pipe. You can see that it's, it's rusted through there. Okay, so this uh, seriously doesn't want to come out until later. So I'm just going to snap this off. And we can take, take the brake anchor off later on and, and get this off with the wheel cylinder, which is going to need a refurb anyway. So it depends now whether I want to remove try and remove it from here so that we can get this union cleaned up which I think we will do try and strip this down while we're here so we've got to un remove this side and the other side and, and then this shouldn't be too hard I also want to get the 
diff from get rid of this oil as quickly as I can because it's an environmental hazard and it stinks. Well, she came out, but in two pieces. We want to keep that fixing, maybe clean it up. Let's see if we can get rid of, well, we'll have to undo the other side first. So we want to try and undo that. We'll probably end up snapping it off and uh, snapping this off. So this one, one is actually working quite well. It's coming out quite nicely. Although, you know, the brake pipe's had it, at least we got the shape. If I can't get a replacement, at least we've got a template. Alright, it's going to come out there with a vengeance. Okay, now this side started to turn out. It's rotating the whole pipe. And uh, we've got some leakage here, probably a, a breakage in the pipe. It just leaves our little brake union to remove. I think these are half. I'm going to go get two half spanners and we'll see what happens. So these parts are fresh off today. Now then, just going to need some editing. I've uh, just got some vinegar that I use for brass cleaning. And they could really do with a degrease in first. But we'll go back and see these later. So these items, they had three or four hours in the vinegar. And then they're like this. Now at this stage, they don't look particularly clean, do they? No. This is where you want to then use some auto sole. So what I'll do is just give them a quick polish with that and then we'll have a look at them. And these have now, these are about how I, you know, there's a little bit, they're not 100%, there's a little bit, they're, you know, they're 60 years old or so. Now this, the breather, it's important that it works rather than that it looks good. But if it works and looks good, and you quids in really, I want to say it looks good, it's just clean. Now the washer for this is still on on a diff, embedded in the, in the crud. So that's a bit of vinegar and then some metal polish. And they come up quite pleased with that. So having stripped down most of the, well all of it, removed, drained, what have we removed? We've removed the drain plug and emptied the diff, we've removed the brakes, the pipes. Next we have to remove the half shafts, in order to do that we have to remove these little hubcaps. I've taken the liberty of loosening the driving member 5 16 Whitworth bolts. There'll be 12 of those on, including both sides. So anyway, we have to remove this hub cap first. So once you've removed the hub cap, there's a little split pin. Mine snapped off. Oh dear. And then hopefully, your castle nut or crown nut is not going to be seized up. And this one isn't because it doesn't need to be done up to any extremely strong torque and next we've got to remove the driving member bolts six off five sixteenths Whitworth plus six off the little spring washers then I'll get my crankshaft splitter and pull it off this one's tapered or spigoted, so it's likely to be needing a puller. So I'm pretty sure I've drained the hub of oil here, but I might not have done, so I've put a vessel down there to catch it. So I'm just tightening this by hand. 
and it should be pulling off the driving member. Well, it's reached a sticky bit, so I'm going to give it a bit of persuasion. Here it goes. Ah, and we have oil. So I was right to put a vessel there, weren't I? to pull that off didn't we right this is the homemade gasket I experimented with and it was made out of a shredded wheat packet well obviously the oil uh, stayed in there and didn't leak out as so there it is <laughs> but I'm not sure whether it did ooze out because it the whole thing sort of covered in sort of oily glaze but that might be where I spilt the oil filling it filling up the hub or where it leaked out why, why I had to make this gasket so you know it worked it worked some of the, some of the time obviously in other words it didn't leak like a sieve gasket I don't know what I'm talking about today this is the fiber washer and I'm gonna leave the fiber washer on there on the half shaft a little bit of waggling the half shaft does come out this one was in quite a state before I put it in there again a while back I just wanted to have a quick look at it and uh, and so now you do this on the other side if you pulled the half shafts out that far you'd be able to remove the diff if it was on the vehicle but as I'm gonna strip I want the case so I want the uh, brake anchor plates off as well. So I'll be taking this completely to pieces. So the next item on the rear axle strip down is to remove the brake drums and the first thing we go to do is there's a snail cam on the back. Now on the front they were 3 8 Whitworth I think but this one is 9 16 and on this side it's particularly corroded as is the other end. Let's, let me take you over to the other end. It hasn't been undone for years. You know, that's the bit we're looking at there. So, I might need some persuasion. That's what I'm going to get into right now. So that one just took a few turns to reach the end of its turn, anti-clockwise. Yeah, so of course there's a pair of snail cams, one for each shoe. <laughs> I'm just uh, heating up the one on the other side of the other side. So I've loosened one going to coax this one to be loosened. It should make making a brake drum come off a lot easier. So next on the agenda will be an impact driver and something to hit the impact driver with. We'll be using that too to take out these special screws that hold the brake drum on. Um, I preempted needing an impact driver. This one's got some oil spilt on it, so it might come out 
there are three of these. That's just in there to stop a drip. A potential drip. Yeah, so there are three of these. Impact action going on here. That one's not a fight. There's that one. Double check that actually. Yeah. Right, let's get one of these. Nice and pronto. Oh, they've got some copper slip on there. I don't know whether I put that on there. I think I must have done. That ain't very old. Anyway, <laughs> at the moment the axle is resting on the brake drum. It's going to mean it's a bit tricky to get off, but I've got got a jack. Useful. Let's just lift it on the jack. And it's off off it now. Yeah, just. So these three, they came out without a fight, but the drum is still stuck on there like Santa Claus in a chimney. So what I'm going to do is go get a screw that I can screw into here. It's probably full of junk. So it's unusual, they, they usually come off easier than this, but this hasn't been off for many years. Let's have a look, when it comes off we'll have a look and see if there's any evidence of how long it's been on there. I've wound off the snail cams at the back to hopefully reduce the contact between the brake shoes and the drum. I'm going to use this little thing, which is just a bolt, the right size. Sounds like it's snagging on the brake shoes again. Very reluctant to come out. 
so even though the snail cams at the back there's one and there's one opposite they're fully unwound but it still doesn't want to give up so maybe we'll have another go at it now it's starting to move found some more move, movement in the snail cam now that the, the oil and the springs had started to move a bit so I tapped it on square and it's ready to come off Inside, I think you can see where it was gripping. I mean, let me move the camera. Yeah, okay, there's where I think it was gripping. I mean, that's only surface. It only needs to be surface to grip it, and it's it can be a bit of a pig to get off. I mean, other than that, it's nice to see the shoe has kept the moisture out, and so the, the metal is still shiny. But where the moisture's got in. It's just caused a little patch of, of rust. It's nothing to nothing to really worry about. Nothing that a good clean won't sort out on a decent brake drum. It's the advantage of drum brakes, I suppose. They're pretty serviceable. So it's a little bit awkward to start getting this drum off because the axle is resting on the drum. This bolt is the same thread as as one of the little nuts. So it does go in there, in the hole, and if you're going to do it this way, it's a good idea just to, don't do it by tightening the thread alone, but if we start, if we have a look at this gap, whoops, <laughs> I reached the end of the run out on the thing there, so it wouldn't have shown much, and just see that starting to open up. Just want to open it up a bit, give it a little tapacious, because it didn't open very well on the cam. The snail cam was pretty rotted out. Reached the end of the run out again. Uh huh, making noises, isn't it? It's definitely opening up. shoes. Well, it's opening up, but it's going to pull a, pull a shoe with it. It's it's probably due to rust. I think you can just see the shoe through the, through the crack there. It's not a crack, it's a gap. Through the gap. I can't get to it. Soft. It's a bit, a bit close to the crown jewels, that one, so. Oops. Some trouble using an adjustable. Right there, the shoe just let go. And so the shoe is now back in the original uh, where it should be. It was dragging the shoe out with it. Uh, it might just come out now, actually. Oh dear, oh dear. Let's turn it a bit more. The trouble is the axle is resting on the on the brake drum. shoe was gripping the inside of a drum showing evidence 
Well, it don't matter about this. This this would never touch the brake drum. This is the the material. Uh, this would never touch the brake drum. This is the material it would be in contact with the brake drum. All right, finally got the axle on a jack, just making removing the drum a lot easier. So let's have a look. Right. Well, on the whole. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, that's just that. That's just that little hole. <laughs> That's a little hole to let the dust out, you can just see the... Um, yeah, so it's probably gripping where that bright piece of rust is. So the tools I'm going to use for removing the brake shoes, as we've taken the drum off, are two large screwdrivers, flat blade screwdrivers, I don't think it makes a lot of difference. I'm going to attempt to record this one from a different angle, because it's a two-hand job. Basically, the first screwdriver goes in and you lift it off the wheel cylinder. And, it's, and then at the same time, you want to get behind the, the shoe and bring, bring where it's slotted into the wheel cylinder, you want to bring it forward of the wheel cylinder. So let's give that, give that a whirl. Okay, so I was doing that absolutely backwards. So you leave it in the wheel cylinder. Okay, and you lift it out of the other end. This is upside down, so this is the bottom. So you lift it out of the bottom first. It's a two screwdriver job. I'm going to get the other screwdriver in back of it. So when I lifted it clear, I can knock it, just lever it back. See if we can get that in, in the camera shot. using it. There we go. Right. That's what I was trying to do. Now the other one, I haven't managed to get it back in the wheel cylinder as they've both they've both gone floppy now. So that's what we were trying to do. That's what we were trying to do. Leave it in the wheel cylinder, lever it out of the bottom, which is now the top because this is upside down. And the springs should be self-explanatorily fallen to pieces. Right, that's that. Right, tools, tools to remove the brake shoes. Two screwdrivers. Now, on the rear brake hub assembly, on the rear brake end plate, the bottom is the bottom isn't a wheel cylinder so only the top is a wheel cylinder on the front it doesn't matter which end you start at because they're both wheel cylinders but on the bottom one and this is upside down so this is normally on the bottom but the first thing that to do is lift out the shoe from the guide which is easier said than done <laughs> well, I'll start on the top one then okay. and I'm using the other screwdriver to keep it away from going under the anchor plate spring here. I wonder if we've got to put it the other side. There is a spring that might need to just be coaxed over the over the guide itself. Anyway, right so that's the first one nearly out of the guide at the bottom. Let's try lifting the other one up a bit. They're a bit stiff. Oh, here we go. So I'm using the other screwdriver to keep it out of the younger plate. Swap the screwdrivers around. Coming out. There's a spring here and I think it would be more comfortable if it was the other side of the guide plate but once you've started to lift them out it won't it won't come out anyway we can just stretch the spring a bit
a little bit of coercion that one. So now the other one, once one is out it's obvious that the others come a lot easier. So now they'll just be in here. Let's bring the camera across. Here's the wheel cylinder. The brake shoe is still in the slot of the wheel cylinder, so if I lift it out, like so, that shoe is now clear. Well, the, the springs should just give up, but they don't want to today, which is a bit odd. There's one spring. Okay. Test the springs. Let's have a look. You know, on this one, the springs stayed attached, which could be a good tip for putting them back together. Or it might just be a, a load of crap. Anyway, so there's the springs. I'll put it back together later. For now, just getting the, the shoes off is as good as I wanted to do. So there's the snail cam. wasn't really effective. Even out all the shoes had stuck to the inside of the drum, which is possible. Anyway, we can service the snail cam. There's uh, four of those all together, and we can service those when we get the hub off. So I just want to be putting, these are the three brake drum screws and I'm just going to put them back in the hub, rear hub assembly. So we don't lose them. And next, now that's done. So what I need to do is un unlock the lock washer here, which I've started to do with a screwdriver and now I'm just going to drift that back with a drift that fits under there like so. Okay so now we're going to remove the hub fixings. Now I've got the brick part, 52mm socket and some Stilson's, Stilson's plumber's wrench. It's a number 18 this one, if you open it on full it just is wide enough to go around the outside jaws. Okay, I might have said it was an 18 uh, inch, but obviously it's a 14 inch Stilson's, which, which opens up. So that's the first of the, the hub hub nuts. Okay, so I will be marking that one up. That's just the way I do things. Try and remove the washer. Now the key way on this one is that if it was on the vehicle, oh it is, it's just about at the top. I would say it was at sort of 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock anyway, so that's that, it's at that angle. It's not quite at the top, although it is at the top actually if you follow the line down, I suppose it is at the top. Okay, oh I've got another one there. That one wasn't very tight. It's got some dirt there on the threads, just making it a bit awkward to get off. Okay, it might be a two-hand job at this point to remove the rear hub assembly. should be a washer I thought it's they adhere to the top of the bearing quite easily because of the uh, the desire of nature not to create a vacuum when you pull two flat surfaces apart and uh, 
that reason you know, it can be a bit awkward so there we are that was what I was looking for and now we just pull this off which I'm going to use two hands for so I don't spill everything everywhere so having removed the brake anchor plate and the hub rear hub assembly from the other end it's time to do a more detailed video of what exactly I did so you know, the first thing to do is take off this hub nut which I must admit is it's in it's got some black paint on it and it's, it's been hit and chipped a few times so the first thing to do is to knock back this lock tab washer tools for the job soft faced and a screwdriver a drift and a proper hammer socket number 14 inch Stilson's now then, this is going to uh, this is going to cause the diff to roll forwards until until the actual well, the actual case will roll forwards <laughs> okay we get it in position we'll get it in position Good idea to leave the diff itself on the case until these are all undone. Keyways pointing upwards, which is where it should be. 
Well, the bearing holder, the bearing sleeve, which is attached to the axle case, is a bit stiff to get off, so I've replaced the half shaft because I, I don't think it will be particularly pressing against the diff very hard. I've replaced the half shaft and just put the second hub nut on, and I'm going to use this crankshaft splitter to pull it off. Quickly going to set up this crankshaft splitter. Wow, smell the diesel. Just got to make sure it's not. left to wonder about these 10 uh, 3 8 British Standard Fine or 5 8 Whitworth Spanner no sorry 5 16 Whitworth Spanner anyway there's 10 off of these with little spring washers then we can take the diff off and sort out cleaning up this case all right I'm starting to take these nuts off I'm noticing some of the spring washers are missing which could explain why it's been weeping also, it means it's been off before and that could explain why there's some metal filings are found on the end of the half shaft, which is inexplicable. So it might have had a replacement part someone might have fitted and uh, they didn't put... Look, I have to get some new spring washers because, well, there's at least three of them missing. Yeah, so I've got the, the diff case up in a position where I'm ready to prepare it and... Oh, hello! What's this? Well, I'll tell you what this is. I just found it in that pool of oil in the bottom of the diff case. Well, this would explain the iron filings. Okay. This would explain the iron filings because it's probably been round the gears because it's loose. It keeps hitting the gears. But where the hell did this come from? Let's have a look at the diff. Okay, well, it's getting late now, low light and all that. I mean, on first glance, you would think that the split pin would be one of these, one of these two. But it ain't them, obviously, because they're in situ. Well, that means that I need to go and have a look at the diagram of the diff to see <laughs> where all the split pins are located. I mean, could be something down here. And I've also now got to check. Well, I suppose it's a matter of course, really, to check check the gears for wear. Now, one would like to hope that these gears are harder than a split pin, but you never know. So that's where I'm going to be for the next short while. Ugh. Well, anyway, at least it explains where those iron filings might have been coming from. But it means, you know, the, the missing the missing spring washers from where it was sealed in. It just means that some total lunatic has been down in, in this thing already, you know. Loose split pins and missing spring washers. 
steroid in. I wonder it got laid up. Okay, rudimentary inspection shows that there isn't a pin in this part. Now whether that's a solid pin or a split pin, I'll have to check the diagram. Uh, there's supposed to be four of these split pins, but I'm not sure they're the same ones. They, these split pins hold the bearings for the bearing adjustment, the bearing adjusters. I don't know whether they're the same as the pins at the bottom. I don't know. Right, here we are in the cold light of day, and I've had time to look over the parts catalogue and the manual. And what I've discovered is the split pin that I found at the bottom of the diff case, slightly mangled up. Let's go over and have a look at it. But it was this one, which has actually gone through the system, so to speak. Let's go back. It goes at the bottom of the pinion shaft. And it, well, I'm pretty sure it goes to the bottom of the pinion shaft because there's a hole where there's supposed to be a split pin according to the parts catalogue. The split pin goes in with the eye, this end, and you're supposed to... It's supposed to be a split pin. It's supposed to be opened up. The, at the other end, it's a plain pin, which I guess is held in place. Now, I can't really run the diff without a pin there, because it's going to want to give up at one point, probably when you want it the most. So there's supposed to be a split pin there. Now I've got a choice of split pins. I could use a nice long one, or I've modified one to make it easy to put through the hole. Let's go back and have a look. It's got to go through the hole and open it up. Now obviously there'll be a special tool to do this. And I've only got a hook tool and a pair of needle nose pliers. But I'm thinking that's what I'm going to have to do. If I used a long one, it would still mean a very fiddly aspect of getting in there. So I'm hoping to get to get one the similar length. Let's go back. This is the one that came out of the machine. And this is the one I've modified to make it easy to open. I modified it just by cutting a tiny little piece off so that I can get a hook tool in there and open up the split pin because I think, or it seems evident, that this one went through the system. It hadn't been opened, so the split pin fell out like a normal pin, like a plain pin, and not under not under the pressure. I mean, the plain pin, I don't know if it's a drive fit or something. It might be incredibly hard to get out. I haven't tried that, don't need to try that. So anyway, let's try and install this split pin without having to dismantle the diff any further. Well, I've installed to the best of my ability. Now the split pin goes in through the pinion shaft. And I've turned it back on itself so that it can't, I mean, that's how you're supposed to use a split pin. It's turned back on itself. Now I know it's a little loose looking, but I've actually used the same measurements. Let's go over and have a look at the measurement. This is 126 thousandths across, and that's the same size. For this one though, you can see that it wasn't opened up ever. That was never opened up. It's gone through the blooming mincer, but this one I've opened it up. Now I could keep trying to pull it back, but I'm a bit conscious of snapping the end off because I don't like to open and close too many times. And now it's on there, it's doing the job of a split pin. Let's see if I can get any better detail. So I just opened it up, I put it in there. Put it in as far as it would go and got a screwdriver in there and managed to just lever it up. But of course, it would like to go under the, the crown wheel, I think it is, the king wheel, anyway, the big wheel. There's a sort of recess in there that it would go under. But that's not in the 
It's not in the parts catalogue as it going in there is a plain pin. It is a split pin and it does go this way round with the eye the opposite side of this crown wheel. So it's in there correctly. It does seem a little bit on the loose side. But the fact is it's secure. Well, after filming it, I decided that I would try and open it up a little bit more, so I have done. So, that's starting to really fold back on itself, so that split pin ain't going nowhere. You know, it's split pin size, and given the tolerances of other split pins in this, it's, you know, it's sort of similar. Oh, it just remains to make sure that it won't... It, I mean, there's nothing it can catch on. <laughs> there's no moving parts in this. I mean, the danger is if the split pin fell down and entered... and entered the actual diff, which is what's happened. So if I go and get... If I go and get anything, you can see in there... I've got a whole collection of... Of iron filings at the edge. At the edge, this is a very good candidate for having an iridium magnet put in the diff case now to catch any iron filings. Actually, then they weren't there. It wasn't that bad. Let's have a look at the actual looking at the actual split pin that I found. It looks like luckily it hit a wheel and got thrown out pretty quickly. I bet someone heard a funny noise come from it though. Anyway, so I think I've avoided having to rebuild the diff just by putting in that split pin. It's the obvious like for like. I mean, there should be a split pin there. I found a loose split pin at the bottom of the case. I've replaced one. So it should be that. Now, incidentally, uh, the red on the inside is why I painted the outside of the diff case red. Um, uh, yeah, after I stripped down all this rust, there wasn't really uh, an original colour. So I haven't replaced that split pin. I've put a half shaft, just a short shaft, in its suitable hole, just to check over the functioning of the rest and have a look at the gears and so just carefully turning it over and I found what looks to be a fragment of that split pin down where the jaws of these let's see if I can zoom in on this oh yeah there it is all right well then it's going to wobble about a bit hopefully I won't drop it further in there I think I've left it there. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably not a very big fragment. Crap. Well, well luckily it's magnetic. <laughs> yeah. So I just got to pick the shards of the damn thing out. And this explains why I was finding iron filings on the half shaft. And I, I hadn't run the truck or anything. I just took the half shaft out to have a look at it. And there were iron filings on it. Yeah. So I've got to pick out. It's probably how one of our culprits. So let's, let's turn it over some more. There's definitely something in there sticking, you can feel it. And I'll be able to water up, uh, water, oil these, oil these oil ways a little bit better. I'm just looking to see if there's anything as extravagant as it, like a broken tooth or anything, but I don't, I don't think it is. I think a split pin is, is luckily it's soft enough to actually go through this. I mean, don't recommend you try it, but. So that next to the main pinion, uh, pi yeah, pinion arm there, 
pinion is what the cogs are, isn't it? So the shaft, the pinion shaft is the orange coloured, copper coloured thing. There's my half shaft, right up, butted up next to it. Um, it could actually, what I can feel is probably the old oil on it. Anyway, so at least there isn't any, there isn't any noticeable play or anything. It was probably a recon diff or something. And someone just didn't do that split pin up very well. Or forgot to do it up or something. Anyway, so I think I've got most of the fragments out. I've certainly wiped away a lot of iron filings. And I pulled out quite a few pieces of fragments. Like I say, I think it got thrown clear and was thrown in the bottom of the diff, in the pan. Oh, that was a close one. So actually the rest of the diff, I'm really happy with it, you know. <laughs> I think it looks pretty low mileage, to be honest. And I've cleaned it up now as best I can really with sort of swabs, fresh oil, turning it gently, looking for trouble. And to take you over to, I managed to pick out three more pieces of, of what looked like old split pin. And I think the rest of it's turned into, it turned into oil, turned into the old oil. So I'll be happy to give this thing a clean up and put it back on really. This is the repair that I've done. Well, I would say it's a repair, just replaced a split pin because the old split pin had fallen out. It didn't seem to have been opened out. But I've opened this one out, I've folded it right back over the thing, over the pinion shaft. Yeah, other than that, I mean, there's no, there don't appear to be any wear on the, on the surfaces of the pinions. The wear seems to be very limited. It looks, looks incredibly low mileage, really, considering the age of it. It's a 62, but I think this diff was obviously been off before because there was all those spring washers missing. So, there we are. It's probably a bit noisy that's all because it was lacking lacking a split pin there or there was a split pin for float, floating around in it in it it's actually welded a washer to the diff case this is a normal drain hole which is starting to key open but I'm, I'm all right with that but this one had keyed right open so rather than weld it up and re-drill it, I just drilled a, uh, welded a washer on it, which I think is all right. I'm just unblocking the rest of the drain holes. Don't think that's a drain hole. So on the other side, it's sealed up, and there shouldn't be one. A drain hole that is. So the keyed out drain hole, just welded a washer on that. So get ready to paint the rear diff, rear axle, diff cover, axle case. <laughs> 